Hi, welcome to Chamber Chats. I'm Bruce Williams. I'm the CEO of the Greater Victoria Chamber of Commerce. In the comfort of my own office today, I'm usually in the studios at Czech Television, but doing it from my cozy little office corner here today. This program is made possible by the support of Island Savings, a division of First West Credit Union. And I'd like, as always, to acknowledge that I live and work in the ancestral territories of the Lekwungen speaking Coast Salish nations, the Songhees, and the Esquimalt. Well, it's no surprise to anybody that the film industry has been growing and growing and growing on Vancouver Island. We see them in remote locations. We see them on the streets of Victoria. We see them in Ladysmith. They're all over the place. To go along with that, to grow the industry, there are plans underway right now to create film production studios. We're going to talk about two in particular. One of them is being done in collaboration with the Malahat Nation. The first, though, is something that's being proposed in the District of Saanich at the Interurban Campus of Camosun College. And Jeff Wilms here is the VP of membership, uh, sorry, Partnerships uh, at uh, Camosun College joins me to talk about that. Hi, Jeff. Hey, Bruce. How are you? Good, thanks. So if people can kind of imagine that campus in their mind, where is the pros, proposed site for this film studio? So it'll be at the sort of the so southeastern corner of the campus. If people are familiar with PICE, um, the Pacific Institute of Sport Excellence, um, and there's a large uh, playing field there, It'd just be behind that, that facility. Um, there are currently some government uh, buildings located there that, that are going to be moving. And it's, a, it's about a five acre plot of land um, that, that, that's available to us. So I guess the, uh, the question might be, what, why is a, is a college like Camosun getting involved in the production of film? Why are you doing that? Yeah, and our, our interest is not in the production of film. We're, we want to support the film industry on Vancouver Island. Um, our interest is, is seeing the education piece come to light. Um, mm -hmm. it, what we know is that as productions uh, increase and have been increasing on Vancouver Island over the last 10 years, that there's going to be a real need for education and training in the film industry. Um, and if we build, uh, you know, in partnership, a film studio, which we wouldn't run ourselves, we would we would do that in partnership with a film industry leader, um, that there'll be uh, education and training uh, needed for that for that um, for that entity. So what faculties are we talking about here? I can see something like set building. Um, yeah. All this, tell me what it's, what's involved. Which curriculum. Yeah. So, you know, it's, I, I would say that to put it in a nutshell, it would be primarily for us trades and technology. Um, so the trade side, it's all the behind the camera stuff. Um, everything from production assistants to gaffers to set designers, costume designers, um, hair and makeup. Um, those would all be areas that that we know that there's a there's a demand for for education and training and that we would be interested in getting involved in. And on the tech side, um, all of the post production work that happens in the film industry now is super important to have people trained who are able to do that work. Yeah, because not very much is really done in actual live locations as much as it's done virtually with green screens and enhanced uh, animation and stuff. So yeah, it's is part that something of it, for sure. That, is there room for that to grow within the curriculum? I guess there is. Yeah, I mean, we, we actually don't offer, um, we, we, we kind of offer things on the periphery of that curriculum now at Camosun, but um, certainly there's room for, for us to add more on the tech side. And, and what we know is that the demand for those kinds of jobs and, and for that kind of training is much higher than the actual training opportunities that exist. So this is a pretty cool thing to combine all those things together. It's almost like it's, is it public private? Is it fair to say it's that? You know, I, I, we haven't worked out what the partnership arrangement will be yet, um, but for sure, Camosun's not going to be in the business of running a film studio. That we know. <laughs> um, what we're in the business, what we're really good at is education and training and working with, with learners. Um, uh, and, and that's what, what we're going to continue to focus our attention on. Um, and, and what we plan to do is, is to enter into a partnership agreement um, with uh, an entity or more potentially more than one entity who would want to run a film studio here. Has something like this ever been done elsewhere? Is there a model similar to this anywhere? You know, there really isn't. Um, the, the closest model that we've seen, and we were down in LA a couple of years ago looking at LA Center Studios where they, where they run an education um, piece as part of the studio that they operate there. Um, but that's really uh, front of camera stuff. So it's at the acting and, 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 and uh, dancing and so on, other things that happen in front of the camera. Um, so we, to be honest, have not seen a, a similar kind of uh, uh, studio operation anywhere else in the world. So this will be quite unique. Yeah, we have some drawings that you send in that kind of show us what this is proposed to look like. Mm -hmm. Does any of this infrastructure exist now? 
None of that particular infrastructure of the drawings that you've seen exists now. Um, what exists now are, are many of the training facilities, of course, that we have at Camosun Interurban um, for the trades. So we would we would um, certainly take advantage of the fact that we have um, substantial trades facilities that will allow us to do all kinds of training that will be related to film industry training. So the business side question is, who's going to pay for this? How's it being financed? <laughs> so that's where the partnerships come in, right? Uh, yeah. uh, our, our plan, uh, if, it, if it all goes well and we're working on a business plan that's almost complete and, and we hope to be uh, sort of taking that into the, into the public domain early next year, uh, would be to seek partners who would like to get access to our land, which, you know, our plan would be to lease that land over a period of time. Um, and, uh, and, and also work with a partner in the development of, of some education space. And that's most important to us. So what's a realistic timeline for this, do you think? You know, I, I can imagine that um, as early as next year, we, some, of the, some of the development on the infrastructure part of the site will probably start to happen. Um, we've got a road access piece that we, we want to get working on, which we would do whether we have a studio or not. But I think that's going to be important to get, to, to get started. And I, I would imagine that, you know, within three years out, we'd be looking at a facility on the, on the, on the campus at that point, if all cool. goes well. So ultimately, you know, the big climax at the end of the film or the end of the production, what does success look like for this project? I think success certainly looks like, you know, a fully operating uh, studio, hopefully with uh, with three sound stages. That's our plan and production production facilities and, and an amazing education space with education programming up and running in a few years time. In fact, the education piece will probably start much sooner and uh, you'll start to see short courses being offered by Camosun sometime early uh, next year. I know the overarching sort of purpose behind this, the film commission have spoken about this, and that is to make this a destination for those who are filmmakers, which means that your facility and others would mean that we can ramp up the capacity of that sector to grow here. Uh, next, we're going to talk about something that's going on on top of the Malahat, the Malahat Nation, also a film production studio. We are talking film production today on Chamber Chats. Jeff Wilmshurst is still with us. He is the VP of Partnerships at Camosun College. We're going to talk now about a project being proposed with Malahat Nation on top of the Malahat. Joining me to talk about that, Angela Vandenhout is the uh, Director of Economic Development for Malahat Nation. And Beverly Dondale is with Alpha Select Production and the Malahat Film Studios. Welcome to both of you. And um, I'm going to big, big begin with you, Angela. Uh, Malahat Nation is a very progressive nation and an entity. There, there's all kinds of proactive things going on for economic development, the Malahat Skywalk and other things too. But tell me about the idea for this film studio and how that sort of went forward. Yeah, absolutely. And I have to admit to you, Bruce, that I started with Malahat six months ago. So I inherited this wonderful idea. So I'm going to shoot it over to Beverly to explain how that came about. Yeah. So how do we get to this point, Beverly? Well, it, it, started in 2017. I uh, was doing all sorts of uh, investigating of building a film studio and I had many iterations. I watched a lot of people try and fade away over the years, over the 10 years that I was doing this. And uh, we basically, I, I, I just wanted to have diversity built right into the film studio. And so I wanted to figure out a way of bringing in First Nations into the, the um, production. And Malahat had the, the amount of land that we needed and they understood not only the scale, but, but understood that I wanted to be a partner with them, that it wasn't just leasing land, that we wanted to work with them and, uh, and make this huge film studio. So Angela, how does this fit into the aspirations of Malahat Nation and how you want to grow business for your members? Uh, business success to us means more than just the bottom line. Um, the you know positive revenue stream is a given, but beyond that, it means um, you know adherence to and respect of you know the social community of the Malahat Nation, uh, reconciliation and respect for the lands and its people. I think at its very core. So any initiative that we move forward has to respect those basic parameters before we'll even explore it. And with Beverly's passion for uh, reconciliation, her openness, always asking questions, uh, the best way to approach things, it aligns perfectly with the type of business that we would pursue. 
Yeah, because Angela, I mentioned the Skywalk that opened up very successfully this past year and this project, some other things that the nation is doing along the waterfront in Bamberton and other areas. Yeah. Um, this is very transformative, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, e even just on the level of scale, right? It really just empowers, I think, any nation who would push forward with a project like this to show um, exactly what they're capable of. So yes, it's incredible. Yeah. Okay. We saw a little bit of what's planned at uh, Camos and Beverly. Let's take a, 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 a conversation direction and talk about the facility you're going to build because we have some images to show people. This is quite complex. I mean, there's a lot going on here. Kind of there walk is. me through this. So it, it took time to get there. I initially was looking at a retrofit and one purpose built. And one of the big things that was very difficult to do is to get uh, the the equipment providers to come to the island and stay here on something so small. And so over the years, I just kept adjusting and trying different things. And it was only when I got to that five studio, um, five sound stages that people started getting interested. The one stop shop for me being in production was really, um, reducing the cost of bringing equipment here and diverting waste from the landfill. So I, you know, bought a location kit and a wardrobe kit because I wanted to avoid having it go to the landfill and because there's, there hasn't been traditionally been back to back productions. So that's where the one stop shop came in. And so that is ensuring that we have all of the equipment and services as close as possible. And so that's where that came in. The location required a hotel. We needed to have a hotel. I know a lot of people um, think everybody's going to go to Victoria and they will, but there's going to be a lot of need for uh, the, the hotel close by. Uh, we, we also want leisure guests. So it's not just for crew, but it's also for leisure guests. And, and, and um, Angela will speak more about that, but it, it really is about creating that tourist uh, approach so that people can come and tour the studio and, and, and see what it's all about. And eventually we want to have um, like either, you know, affordable housing, but also condos above the shopping village that we hope to have in phase two. So you said a key word there, village. Angela, you're basically creating a village here, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, building upon the momentum of the Skywalk, we really want to um, increase your, your stay within yeah. the Malahat region. We want you to come and this is your destination and you can spend three days here, no problem with, with everything that we have. That's really the goal. So absolutely. Well, you look at what Universal and Disney have done in different parts mm -hmm. of the world, right? Mm -hmm. They build around that whole entertainment piece and they, yes. and they go from there. Um, Jeff, I'm going to come back to you for this as the plans move forward. The pandemic has probably adjusted people's plans and their course on doing this and supply chain and all the rest of it. How much has that come up in the conversation? You know, it hasn't come up very much yet, um, we, you know, because we haven't hit the construction phase yet, obviously, and, and we'll have to see whether there are impacts because, uh, due, to the, due to the pandemic or not. But what I, you know, what I want to say also, though, Bruce, if I might, is uh, how excited we are about the Malahat project as well. Um, from our perspective, the more sound stages we have in Southern Vancouver Island, the better. Um, yeah. It's going to mean that um, the, the equipment providers are going to be highly attracted mm -hmm. to come here. We're going to have um, all of the crews that we need, and we're, going to have, we're probably going to attract a lot of people back from lower mainland onto Vancouver Island who are in the industry who want to come back and live and work here, who may be from here originally. And that's the story we're hearing. So huge supporter of the Malahat project. And, and we want to see all of these projects go and we think there'll be more. Um, so not very worried about, about the supply chain stuff yet. Uh, we'll worry about that when, when the time comes. But uh, right now, I think it's, it's really exciting times for the film industry here. Yeah, uh, Beverly or Angela, have seen anything come up about supply chain, if that's going to be a worry, anything like that? Well, I, I'm, I won't speak to the construction part, but I will speak to the, the change of thinking since the pandemic has happened. Before the pandemic, people did not understand the scale that I was going for. Literally, people thought it was a crazy idea and that it was impossible on the island, that it would never happen. And, and as soon as people started 
going through all of that Netflix content and people ran out of shows, all of a sudden people started understanding the need for, for those sound stages and more production facilities. So that's what I would say as far as the, the change in mindset since COVID. And again, we're not um, at the, the, the construction st stage, but Angela can speak to that because she's doing stuff on Malahat. Yeah, I think, you know, just to add the localization uh, of our focus is just the mandate of our project, the one stop shop was just further solidified by by the pandemic, uh, the ability to be able to resource everything within your community is um, very advantageous. So if we can create that hub on Vancouver Island, I think it would be incredible for our economy as a whole. So one of the other factors for Malahat, it's going to be a, a big factor in attracting business when this goes forward is water. Not, not water in the ocean, but water on the land. We'll talk about that next because this is Chamber Chats. And on our Chamber Chat today, we're talking about the film industry and the plans for studios here on Vancouver Island. Uh, Beverly Dondale, within the planet Malahat Nation, includes something that involves shooting with a water element, not, not the ocean, not, not Todd Inlet, but water within the facility. Tell me about that. What? You mean a water tank? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, a water tank, um, and that's the um, that that expertise actually comes with um, Nico Decker and and Nick Studios, and uh, so we actually are going to be delaying that for a little bit and waiting for production to require it, um, and so as and I know that Angela can speak more to this, but. In the early conversations with Malahat, we, we spoke with them about the power needs, the water needs, the travel needs, all of those things, education component, all of those things. So as a, from 2017 to now, we've been in discussions about what is required. And so they've been chipping away and, and putting things in place. And I think that's a good lead up for Angela to continue on. Yeah, with regards, especially, I think, to infrastructure um, planning, um, we're, we're working on another project right now, the Malahat Innovation Park, which we can discuss later uh, if we have time. But uh, we've really planned a lot of the infrastructure around that and discovered um, the access to some wells on reserve and some healthy reservoirs for us to tap into. In addition to the fact that we're actually creating partnerships with adjacent properties who also have good access mm -hmm. to water um, uphill which would help us a lot, particularly with regards to fire suppression and things like that, those types of more heavier load requirements. Uh, six months in, honestly, Bruce, I'm very confident in where we're at with the infrastructure. And that's not just me talking, our water supplier that we've um, got on, on as a partner now as well is confirming our hopes <laughs> that we're able to deliver on the infrastructure side. So we're actually gonna break ground on that infrastructure in the spring. So that's where it's a more holistic look at something that mm -hmm. involves the entire nation, not just this one project. So I guess Jeff Wilmshurst at Camosun, this means that there is a difference between a rural site and an urban site because you're right in the middle of town and you've got water. We have lots of water. We have too much water sometimes. <laughs> um, yeah, and we're not really even an urban site. We're, that's why we're called interurban, I suppose. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're somewhere between uh, urban and, and, and rural. Um, but I think we're in a pretty good location. And certainly the, the film industry folks who've come and had a look at the site with us um, are pretty happy with, you know, uh, its location vis-a-vis -vis the airport and and vis-a-vis -vis downtown. So um, I, I think it's a it, it's a pretty good spot. And, and you know, we don't we don't have a big footprint. The Malahat certainly has a bigger footprint than we do. Um, but but with the with the the amount of land that we have, we, we should be able to at least provide, uh, I think, a, a really good facility that's um, that's really well located. So Beverly, from where that location is at Malahat, you can kind of stand at vantage points and look over and you can see the airport. Mm -hmm. You can see the peninsula, but most people think you have to drive all the way around to bring stuff to and from. Any any marine options being looked at to move goods and yeah. people? Yes, thank you for asking. Um, that was one of the big things in the early days of me trying to figure out how I can mitigate all of those um, problems of the Malahat. And so 
we've been, I've, uh, you've facilitated some of the conversations with BC Ferries with me. Um, we've also looked at a, an option of a passenger ferry. I've talked to Harbor Air and they're willing to, um, to fly in and out. And so we have a lot of different ways. So the passenger ferry would be the, the easiest one to go from our site across and to the airport. And I think the, the two locations that we've kind of toyed with almost makes it look like a 15 minute um, door to door. So that's pretty good. Um, and, and just with, the, with all of the water, the flooding, the this thing that I noticed from that was BC ferries um, increased the number of ferries going across. So Brentwood where there's Bay. a need, yeah. Mm -hmm. So so there will be more ferries as as the demand is required. And we've had those conversations, but there's never really been a something like that that we could really definitively say, yep, they're they're going to increase the number of ferries. So that was really. Um, an upside for me for the tragedy of the flooding. Yeah, and I guess that means better connectivity for the nation mm -hmm. too, Angela, Absolutely. doesn't it, in general picture? Yeah, for everybody, for yeah. everybody, yes. Absolutely, and I think the need um, for the, the added transportation um, to the airport, I mean, this is a huge demand from everybody who's north of Victoria. <laughs> And yep. so I think yes. a project like this just pushes along a mm -hmm. conversation that's already been happening for over yeah. a decade, right? Yeah. It's very exciting to see all this stuff move along. And I'm really confident that all of these uh, programs and plans are in good hands. Uh, Jeff, where can we find out more about the uh, plans for Camosun and the film studio? So we have, a, we have a, a spot on our website. If you look under, just do a quick search under Camosun Film Studio, you'll find our, our, um, our, our little site there. And we've been putting, we have a, an advisory committee uh, that includes Murray Rankin and the mayor of Saanich, who's uh, been helping us kind of guide this forward. And uh, so the, uh, the, as the plans uh, begin to take shape, you'll begin to find more and more information there. And, and there, there should be quite a bit of new information coming in, in, in January, in fact. Great, okay. And Beverly and Angela, where can we find out more about your project? Um, MalahatFilmStudios.com is the website. Uh, we're going to get a new logo there soon um, because we've we've had it branded and and it it is. I'm so excited to share that. And with that, we have renderings. We have um, the people that are involved and a letters of support from all the people that are supporting our project. Very exciting times. And the plans in general for Malahat Nation, Angela, we can get from the Malahat website too, right? Yeah, absolutely. MalahatNation.com. Very exciting times, and we're going to have people all over the world enjoy this locale that we get to enjoy every single day. Thank you all for being here yeah. today. We appreciate it. Thank you for the updates on that. Thank you for watching. I'm Bruce Williams. We'll see you again for another Chamber Chat. <laughs> <laughs>